Hey there and welcome to another episode of How To. My name's Brendan and I'm the creator of Knitwits and Yarns. So on today's episode, we are going to be learning about a folded hem. So I have one done for this pocket here that will be sewn onto a sweater. Just adds a nice thick detail to the side. You can also do it for something like this hoodie. The hoodie hasn't yet had the hem knitted back into itself, which I will explain later in the video, but you can see it here now um, and you can also do it for a beanie so you just sew the hem to itself and you can get a nice double brim in there so in this episode you're going to learn how to pick up stitches so you're going to have to pick up stitches perpendicular to these vertical stitches here to make sure that we have our hem going horizontal you're also going to have to knit into the back of your work and then also cast off at the same time so let's get straight into it. Here's a bit more of a close up of the pocket itself. Don't worry that it is curled because the top up there will be sewn into the actual jumper and so will the bottom, which just leaves the sides that you can put your hands into. So for this video, we're gonna be focusing on this side seam, just this folded seam right here. What we're gonna need is we're gonna need our needles, we're gonna need our yarn, and obviously our pocket. First things first, we're gonna look at our stitches. You can see that the stitches run vertically on the pocket and on the side seam, they run horizontally. We're gonna pick our stitches up from bottom to top, right to left. And then on the other side, we're gonna do kind of the opposite. We're gonna to go top to bottom, but still right to left. So what we're gonna to need to do is grab our needle and pick up the first stitch. First stitch should be about um, the first one on the cast on or the cast off. So that's a little bit trickier. So that's gonna be the first stitch is the cast off or cast on stitch. So we're gonna pick that up like normal and then we're gonna go into the next stitch. So the next stitch right next to it. Whenever we're picking up our stitches, we're always doing it knit wise as well. So I've got two on my knee, my right needle now. We're gonna pick up the third stitch. So that one's right next to it. Pick that up and knit that one. Then we go into the next one, which is the fourth stitch, and we knit that one. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to stop and skip the next stitch. After this stitch that we've skipped, will just continue as normal. So this pattern is asking for, or asking to pick up four stitches, skip one, pick up four, skip one. So we go and do that all the way to the end. Um, each pattern will have its own um, number of stitches that you pick up and you skip or whatever it may be. But this one I have done as pick up four, skip one. What you might notice when you are picking up your stitches, if you roll it over a little bit, you can see that the stitch actually comes um, over the other side. So what we'll be doing is we're essentially knitting the left leg of the stitch. So when you fold it out, the right leg of the stitch is the furthest stitch across. And we're gonna be knitting into the left leg. It just makes it easier because it's the most, I guess, visible stitch, and it's the most prominent. This also makes it a lot easier when we are knitting our seam back onto itself, we will be knitting into that right leg. So that right leg will show a bit better on the wrong side, and we can use that to knit into. It's probably a little bit easier to see it with this nice and close angle. Um, if you unfold the right side, you can see that it's a little bit more complicated than if you were to just let it lie naturally. This way, you can actually see that um, leg or each row right there. When we're counting our stitches, we count in fours because it's four stitches and then a skip. So we go two, four, skip, two, four, skip, two, four, skip, two, four, skip, and two, four, skip. And then we continue on. All right, so I have fast forwarded to the end. We can see all our stitches picked up here. We have 38. 
So 36 is obviously divisible by four, and then we had two left over, so we just continue the pattern until we have none left. We then grab our needle, we twist our work, and we start purling on the inside, because when we picked up, we actually picked it up knit-wise, so all those stitches were knits. When we go back the other way, we're just doing purls, and we just start purling back the other way now. We're just gonna continue doing stocking stitch all the way. Um, my pattern asks for, I believe, eight rows um, of stocking stitch, and we'll be finishing on a knit row, which means when we come back the other way, or when we're finished, we'll have our um, wrong side showing. So that's important for this one. It makes it easier to uh, knit our seam back onto itself. That's my eight rows of stocking stitch done now. And we have finished on our knit row. So a little tip is that when you're actually counting your rows, you wanna be counting nine rows in total because the very first row is actually our pickup or our picked up row. So it's this one here. So that counts as number one and then we're counting another eight. So in total, we should have nine rows in total. There's a few things that we'll be doing for this next stage. So firstly, we'll be knitting our seam into itself. And then secondly, we will be casting it off. The way I wanna do it is I wanna knit it back into that seam. So that's the right leg that we previously had. And here's the left leg here. So the left leg was the one that we picked up the stitches on, which meant that the right leg was the one that remained on the wrong side of our work. Like we did before, if we picked up four stitches and skipped one, we need to do the exact same when we are knitting back into our right leg. The first stitch we want to pick up is the one on the cast off or cast on row. This is the trickiest one but just give it a go trying to find that because you will end up sewing that back um, onto your garment. So we put that on with our right needle, put it in to the left stitch or the stitch on the left needle and knit it as normal. So that's our first one. We then wanna find our next stitch, which is the one obviously right next to it. Right needle into that one. And as we are knitting as normal, knit that one, and now we have three stitches left on our right needle. We now want to lift the second stitch over the third stitch, and that will essentially knit it into the seam, and then we lift the first stitch over the second stitch, and that's gonna be our cast off. So now we've done one so far, or we've cast off one. Now into the next one, so right needle in, into the left needle, knit that around. We have our three stitches, second one over the third one. Now we have two stitches left, first one over the second one. Making sure that we're counting all the stitches that we're doing because it can get a little bit difficult to um, remember your stitch count when we're casting off. Remember we are knitting four of them and then skipping one row. So we just continue doing that until we get to the very end. We're a little bit closer now and I just wanted to show you a little trick um, to identifying your next stitches. I like to look at it as nubs and lines. So if we look at the first one, we can see that there is a line, then there's a nub, line, nub, line. So if I'm going into my next stitch, which is a line right here, I knit this one. So I knit it normally then I'm lifting the second one over the third one to sew it into the seam or knit it into the seam, then lifting it over, which is casting it off. Then the next one is gonna be my nub. I like to think of the nubs as like little nodules. So they're a little bit harder to get your needle into, but once you're in there, you just knit it as normal as you have been doing previously or what your pattern suggests. And the other thing is we go nub, line, nub line, so that's four. Then we skip one, which would be our next nub, and then we go into our line. And then we'd go line, nub, line, nub, skip one, nub, line, nub, line. 
So it is quite easy to remember if you can do it like that. Just remember you're counting those four and you're skipping that one. After you've repeated that to the end, we have our finished pocket. So we just have to fasten off these two loose strands of yarn and then we're ready to sew our pocket into our jumper. So you can see that we have our nice pocket there. We're gonna be doing the top into the jumper and the bottom into the jumper as well, leaving the sides open for your hands. I'll be showing you how to sew your pocket into your jumper in another video, but if you have any comments about this current video, feel free to drop them in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I will catch you later.